Ever. Right, this is a response video to the live chat that we've I've just been watching in Rob Shedhead Weekend Shedhead. Um, they're going to take it in turn at weeks having a chat. So this is my sort of um, I've watched it all. I've listened to it all. Do you know? Um, uh, obviously, the, there was they were in a chat room and the comments were going, and you like to respond, but by the time you've written, they've moved on to another <laughs> subject, or you know. So, this is my response to some of the subjects that came up, and it was mainly about, uh, and I, I think it's a great idea. I think week on week, uh, it will develop and the ideas will come and. They weren't really, they didn't have an agenda. They didn't know what they were going to do. They they ran with what came along in the comments, which was, was a great idea. So this is my sort of, a lot of it was mindfulness. One of it was shed men. The whole idea is to connect shed men together. We're all little hermits in our own little worlds and the the benefits of having or being a shed man or having a shed or if you've thought about it and you thought mm, look at all those people with all that stuff well um as you see by my by my videos um it's 20 quid a week that's all i spend okay sometimes a little more sometimes a little less but this basically can be built on 20 quid a week landing on stuff generous generous donations that come in occasionally i mean even small donations is it just adds another another thing and the thing is when somebody gives something to you um because you still have them uh you know people give me stuff or oh, reggie had a box of this but because we are sort of collectors and we look after them when somebody gives us stuff, first of all, it's available to them to have back at any time. That's why I say anybody anybody that adds to or, or adds to the collection then has access to all of the collection. Do you know what I mean? What they don't want, I might have something else. I do this because I like to be, I like to have a solution, you know. So let's first touch on the, the how great it is to have your own little space in your own little shed. So it doesn't matter what sort of world, work world you live in. Maybe it's stressful. Um, maybe the people you work with aren't the nicest people. Uh, maybe the job you do. Um, whatever, whatever. The the thing is, maybe you sometimes feel a bit bullied at work and they pay the bills you got to do what you're told however work situation is it, it, over the years you know over the years if you have a shed the thing is about having a shed look it is my man cave and my rules it's your own little world reggie on the road man cave this you know sometimes somebody tells you maybe in work do it this way. Put that there. And you think to yourself, well, why, why do I want to put it there? It would be better there. But obviously, they're the boss, they're the owner, they're the foreman. You're just a doer, aren't you? And it's simple, stupid things like that. But if you've got your own little world, I put, okay, it's a hell of a mess, but I put things. Uh, everything here is where I put things. I'm not proud of it. I'm proud of some of it, but not all of it. You know, I am quite untidy. But as always, we're working, we've got other lives. This is only part of your life, so you haven't got all that time. I'm not far off retiring. I'm looking forward to retiring. So the other thing that they touched on, well, well Rob's touched on, he's bought a weld. He hasn't welded for years. You can expect, you don't have to be, now I don't pretend to be good at anything, but you can have a go. And when you're welding, yes, it looks ugly, but it's got a sort of, it's beautiful in its ugliness. And you can experiment and you can get your mind ticking away. Now, if you've been following me for a while, 
I do enjoy my door making. I, I make my own security systems, don't I? And I think about them and I make them and, and that's fantastic. And you've seen a lot of garages with proper um, cases, you know, with proper things. Once people know, once people know you're a bit of a collector and you've got a shed, they, not only are you always keeping your eye out for stuff, but then they know you're a shed man and they might say to you, oh, Reggie, I saw these cupboards. Or you might say to them, you know, I'm a shed man. They would do fantastic cupboards at home. So obviously sometimes people have to sell them, but sometimes they don't sell them to you at the price they would have sold a stranger. They let you have them a bit cheaper or I saw this. This would be great in your shelves. I've had so much... Um, What's it called? So much unknowing help. People have helped me, but they haven't really realised by how much they've helped me. And it doesn't have to cost you a fortune. I know things have gone up. I'm sure I paid nicks or evens. Most of these, I guess, I saved from the um, from the skip. I know the ones in the other garage that I've got that I bought, but I bought them at a good price, knowing I was going to make shelves and... So I bought a few, and oh, Reggie, I've got a few more. Have you got as much as you want? Do you know what I mean? Uh, um, you get a lot of unconscious help, shall we call it, um, to build it. So it's and this is thirty-five years. This is thirty-five years of being a shed man, stroke hoarder, stroke, uh, and it depends on who you are inspired by. Now, my my mate Emlyn. His dad, Jack, Jack Harding Jones, uh, lived in Rossbridgeal. Jack and Frida, you could you could go to Jack, and Jack would disappear in his shed, and he would come back with something. He could fix everything. He would give you a, a an answer there and then. It's not a case of, oh well, you've got to go off to B and Q, or you've got to be off to Focus, or whatever. Uh, I know Focus has gone now, but you. I like to think that you can, if you've got a problem, a pressing problem that you need fixing, there is a solution here to be found. Okay, it might take some digging, it might take some bodging, and it might not look very nice and might need a load of grinding and painting, but there is a solution here. And it stretches your mind like the shelving, you know. When I, I remember I bought these off Ted. Uh, and and Ted didn't really want to part with them. Ted said they're good pieces of wood. So I had seen them. I do remember, Ted, they'd be fantastic shelves. Oh, fanta Ted, what I'd like to do is I'd like to use the buy the wood. I think I bought it. Wouldn't have been a lot of money. Um, but Ted said, oh, all right then, you can have them. So I bought that wood to do that job, and I did what I said I was going to do. So it gives them confidence. Do you know... Do you know how much stuff have you given to somebody and and they've they've said they're going to do something with it and then they end up, they don't do nothing with it or they move it on or, you know, it, it, it dips your, your, your trust in humanity, isn't it? So I like to, if somebody's given me something or sold me something cheap, I'd repair it. I mean, we've just done that. That's still some, wherever did I do it? I did paint it and I did fix it, didn't I? Yeah. So we we fixed that, didn't we? Because we said we were going to fix it, and that's why I got it for fifty p. She said, "Well, if you're going to fix it on your channel, fifty p." <laughs> you know, there's that sort of um, p uh, people get to know you, 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 and and you do. I tell you what, you do, and. Uh, it's nice to bump into fellow shed heads. Do you know? Um, do you know when football people go to a football match? They're all interested in their team, aren't they? And the the other crowd are interested in their team, and they're all a togetherness. Shed men tend to be sort of individuals and on their own little patch. But isn't it fantastic meeting other shed men and what other shed men do and having ideas of other shed men and how they did it uh, and what to do and, you know. So that's that's what I like about having a shed and how great it is. I think it's really great having a shed. 
on all sorts of levels of, um, shall we call it keeping your sanity? Yeah, and sh I'm, how can I, you d I, I like to say you can come up with a solution. Um, yeah, I like, I like to say that your, this solution is my solution, this trolley here. I had three tool trays, what to do with them? So I came up with a plan and I made it. I made it, I made it, is that the right word? Um, it was a bit the same like the editing. They touched on the editing of the films. I don't edit, I'm not that clever. I'm not really uh, that sort of a technical person. I tend to think about what I'm gonna do and what I'm gonna say in my head. Okay, sometimes it goes astray. But if I've got a job, if I've got to do a certain job, then I've got to I think ahead to myself. <coughs> right, I've got to I've got to make a plan for it. Then I've got to um, show a beginning, maybe show a middle, and then maybe show an end. So I sort of have an idea in my head. Uh, but always, always, I don't, when I come to add my films together, I never, never realise that it's going to last that long. Some of these films that I make, I think, well, I'll make a 10 minute video. Half an hour later, it's still going. Yeah. And on the time scale thing, because it's a weeknight, it's going to be on Thursdays at seven o'clock on alternate channels. I think an hour. Uh, Keep the next subject for the next week. That will stretch it on. It will stop you running out of ideas. An hour, I think, was a good idea. An hour and a half, we've all got to go to bed. We've all got to get up in the morning. We've all got things to do. So, hmm, maybe an hour on the time is a suggestion. But it's like this is my channel. I do what the hell I want. And like that is your channel and you can do what the hell you want. Do you know what I mean? It's all great and fantastic. And it's fantastic having the interaction, you know, having the interaction of somebody else. So, uh, and yeah, the invite is always open uh, for, uh, all right, I don't want hordes of people at my door, you know, it's not very good. But... Um, uh, you're invited if you want to come along. If you're a particularly if you're a, a fellow YouTuber, a fellow Shedman YouTuber, um, yeah, come along, have a chat, have a mess about. I'll film you, you'll film me. Uh, it promotes both of us, doesn't it? And we can have a bit of fun. And we can pass on. I don't say I pass on knowledge because I'm not really. I'm just passing on what I do and what works for me. Do you know what I mean? As you know, I'm a truck driver. I, I don't believe they're training the truck drivers correctly today. They mustn't be because they're releasing some right animals out. And I'm not saying what I do or the way I drive is correct, but it's what's kept me safe for the last 30 odd years. It's what works for me, what works out there. Um, I don't I do not do it because I've read it in a book and now I've got to tell you how you've got to do it because that's what the book says. I don't believe in that. I believe in what works and what's proved to work. Do you know, um, it, uh, some, of the, some of the... What you've got to do to pass your test in a truck uh, that's coming back to me is completely not the real thing, not the real world. So they're teaching them wrong. They're not teaching them the right things. They're not making, they're not teaching them the right things in their head. They're not making them think right. <laughs> they're not thinking them wrong. I've been on these CBC courses twice now, so I've done 35 hours and I've listened to the twaddle that they're passing on and it's not good, believe you me. It's not good, no. But there we are. Maybe I've done it too long and maybe I'm old. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So anyway, it was a fantastic, fantastic. It comes highly recommended. And it's going to be at seven o'clock on a Thursday. Let me, oh, cut you off. So this is Weekend Shedhead, Rob's and 
um, small workshop adventures. It's we must subscribe, and we're we we'll watching next week. It's going to be alternate weeks. That's the plan at the moment. So, uh, for the if you've not seen this channel before, we week weekend shed head. Have a look, have a listen, see what you think. And this is my sort of contribution. And hopefully, I've remembered and sort of covered most of the subjects that they uh, they spoke about. Hmm. Right. But uh, yeah, being a shed man. And expanding the shed man community, I think, is a fantastic, fantastic idea. I nearly forgot, and a touch on, a touch on. As you know, I'm into vintage, vintage tools and vintage stuff. And the story that they could tell if they could speak. And for instance, now this is a 1920s drill. Uh, the, 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 and these taps and dies of the age of them, some of them are touching 100 years, over 100 years, years old. What did they do? What? What did they get up to? What were they working on? You know, uh, what have they survived? They've survived two world wars, haven't they? They've survived bankruptcies. They've survived um, bereavements. Th these boxes of tools, 1914 and 1915, oh, oh, if they could speak from the day they were, shall we say, born, how have they, what could they tell us? What happened in their life? What what jobs, what factories did they work in? And what did the factories do? Oh, it's, you know, if they could only speak, you only have to just imagining what's going on with the age and what these these particular, you know, the old tools, that's what interests me in old tools that's why I collect and you know we speak about names of firms that have gone and we speak about war service with the crow's foot uh, and the date and what, what was going on at that year so yeah their vintage tools have a story of their own to tell and, and I've particularly got that bug and uh, on the nuts and bolts thing I think it's just a path that life took me down. It just, once you have one, you have to have two. And when you've got two, you need four. And obviously, when you've got four, you must have eight. And then once you've got eight, you know, it'd be a shame not to have 16, wouldn't it? And then when you've got 16, wow, you've really got going. You need um, 32 then, don't you? <laughs> and so on, and so on, and so forth. Yeah. So, and I love... Um, you know, coming up with, I don't know if they're original ideas or I don't know if, if it just came along as a thought. Um, but I like making a plan and, you know, figuring it out. Um, and this, this thing, this has come out fantastic, holding these big bolts. That's a great idea that's now born in the shed, came out of my head and, and now, hopefully, it's ev in everybody's head that uh, when they've got some big bolts to keep, they just get a bit of chain and they tie and, and they use it like that. That's a, a Reggie invention. Yeah. Um, I must tell a lie, though. I think this is L&S. There's a, there's a firm. And, it, it, you know, the shop is shut now. You can only do it online. The amount of places you could have gone... L&S Engineering in Blockswich had a great shop and everything was set out similar to this on a mesh. Um, I did start to make one, didn't I? On a mesh and you could go and you could see it and you could just say, I want one of those. So I've sort of got to, I sort of started here and didn't continue. I sort of, that's got to be an idea I saw somewhere else and I liked it and transferred it into my little world, which is Reggie's little world, which is Reggie's shed sort of thing. Yeah. So anyway, hmm, I'm going to stop waffling on now and check it out and uh, the best of luck. I hope you're the, 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 the shed men talking. Um... And we all get clicked into it. 
Hold on, what have I done now? <laughs> yeah, I hope it's <laughs> I hope it's the best success. And I think it's a real cracking idea. It's a really good a good idea. Yeah. So it's the same as this handle, look. We saw it in the gun gumball headquarters in London, didn't we? Daily driving exotics took us there. And we saw them go through the door. And there's two of these on the on the two doors going into the headquarters of uh, the Gumball Rally in London. And I knew where there was one. So I rang Tone, my man that uh, gets you stuff that you can't get. So I rang Tone, I says, Tone, have you still got it? He says, yeah, I've still got it. Right, Tone, I'm coming to get it. So <laughs> Tony Bevan, uh, and then of course I made the bracket and put it on here. So you can do, when you've got your own little place you can do exactly what you want and you can if you want to copy somebody you can copy somebody and i thought that's a great idea i'll have one of them on my door so here it is on the shed door and uh, it's on it's on the same handles are on the same door as the gumball rally in london thanks to dry, dry, daily driving exotics is it and watching the um, gumball rally <laughs> oh, I had a bunch of winglets. <laughs> yeah. You haven't seen it in a while. Look, it's filthy. Needs a good wash. I'm about to go and see. Uh, it's due an operation. The front end one's sorting. Um, so I'm going to go and see two garages now. See if we can get a price on getting this front lifted, stiffened, and redone. And have a look we haven't used it in a while we've got a few trips planned for it so it hasn't been a complete flop this year but it's been very quiet this year very quiet indeed but anyway we soon uh, we'll soon be up and running again